Elden Ring is full of characters that have plenty of personalities. From the NPCs that roam the land with their own agenda, to the demigods that fiercely defend their domain. Everybody has someone dear to them that they defend to the death. But what about you and the others like you? Why were the tarnished exiled and fallen from grace, only for them to be called back? And why are some more graceful than others? That's today's topic. So sit back at your favorite site of grace and enjoy. In the lands between, the tarnished are a group of exile heathens forced to leave their homeland and probably even forfeit their life. A sound possibility, considering that when a speck of grace touches your hand at the beginning of the game, it seems like it brings you back to the world of the living. Before that, you are just lying on the floor, either unconscious or dead. This would be the equivalent of being cast out by the church in medieval times, or being forced into exile as a political enemy of the state, either sent to another country, if you're lucky, or to an abandoned island in the middle of nowhere. The Ur Tree and the higher beings in the land manage the status quo with literal grace. This Age of Grace is something similar to the Age of Fire in Dark Souls, in a sense that both are trying to extend a certain semblance of control over an environment that they are familiar with, even if it is in a very precarious state. It is possible that at some point, and for various reasons, you, as part of the Tarnished, became confrontational with the state of things, and this is the reason why you were cast out and your grace taken from you. This makes sense because, when you have a strict regime that is trying to protect itself, it is common for it to punish those who become a threat, or at the very least, are unwilling to follow the rules to the zealous extent that is expected of them. We tend to look at this from the perspective of the game's events, but we can also look a bit into the past, a time before the blessings of grace and the golden order. It was at this time that glitstone spells and astral magic were all the rage, and one of the best semblances of power that humans could wield. In the age of cosmic sorcery, the Raya Lucaria Academy was the place to be. Located in the kingdom of Caria, and supported by the Carian royal class, the academy was the place that produced the best astrologers at the time, when most scholars spent countless nights staring at the sky, looking for answers and ways to harness the vitality of the stars. For a time, this made sense. Why go through the notions if you can just borrow the power from the universe instead? Some feared it, while others completely immersed themselves in this kind of study. Alas, this would not last forever. They may not be a numerous force anymore, and to some extent be seen as an antique of days past, but they are a testament to how things used to be, and a clear way to compare what was versus what is now predominant in the lands between. Analyzing this state of affairs at the advent of the Age of the Earth Tree, we can easily speculate that some of the most ardent students of this discipline were not so happy about the things they have studied all their lives becoming second fiddle to a giant magical tree. There was bound to be opposition coming from powerful circles that refused to be replaced by a new rule of law. This makes a lot of sense, considering how world-changing the Earth Tree era turned out to be, and how attached people can become to the old ways. That is just one possible way to get shunned by the Deku Tree's blunder cousin. But it could have been anything at all, because the Earth Tree era is based on order. And as we know, order is something that humans love to break from time to time. A leader of the Badlands may have slaughtered the wrong person. A bandit could have stolen too much and coned so many people that they were banished as punishment. Or even worse, a reversible version of the death penalty. How about the confessor? Being a spy for the church must have involved a lot of deception, and surely there came a point when one of them crossed the line. Regardless of what class you look into, each is a person that could have become adversarial to the powers that be, a sin for which they've paid for. Another possibility is for the Earth Tree to send its favorite warriors and effectively put them in suspended animation, deep sleep, or frozen in time until they are needed. Considering that the exile happened before the shattering of the Elden Ring, we can say that in times of peace, the tree could have chosen to keep a special force in ice. Sort of like in Norse mythology, where warriors that die with honor are picked by the Valkyries and sent to a place called Valhalla, where they feast and be merry with other fallen warriors like themselves, until Ragnarok comes. In Norse mythology, the return of all those honorable warriors is triggered by the end of days. But in the world of Elden Ring, the return of the Tarnished is an act of desperation, a move made so they can retrieve the Elden Ring's shards and reforge it. There is sure to be a reward for the one that does the deed, and many Tarnished may be enticed by this, but we all know that the endgame here is to rebuild the world that they used to have before the Great War. 
Another purpose to reforging the ring is to end the war, since striking down several wearing demigods can serve to break the stalemate and bring the aggression to a halt. After all, the lands between are stuck in a tense situation where nobody makes a move, but everybody wants to kill one another, and it's only a matter of time before some of them try to get the Elden Ring for themselves. Also, we have to take into account the Flame of Ambition. First mentioned by Margaret the Fell, you can further support this notion, because Grace could be manipulating the Tarnish to want the Elden Ring and make something with it, like a cruel hex that brings you back, only to serve a purpose that fits a grand scheme. By losing the guidance of Grace, any of the Tarnished can create something new and follow their own path. It is also possible for them not to have this so-called Flame of Ambition, or at least use it for other purposes. This kind of breaks the pattern of an authority controlling everything. Is the Urtree not strong enough to force the Tarnished to do its bidding and save the Age of Grace? If it was, it would be like flipping over the game table and opening up new possibilities. Everything falls onto you, the Tarnished. As you roam the land looking for answers and discovering how deep the world has been wounded by the Shattering, will you answer the call and save the realm, thus continuing the age of the Earth Tree, or will you change everything and bring forth something entirely new? Is the prospect of power and glory guiding you forward, or are your thoughts drifting away, making you doubt the path that has been set for you? All of these questions and more linger in your mind as you grab your weapon and travel to the war-torn lands. It will be tough, but believe us when we say that in terms of the lore, we will help you understand while having fun theorizing about all the possibilities that lie in the lands between. Just focus on surviving, as we will be waiting at this site of grace for your return. So what do you think? Would you like us to continue to make more videos on Elden Ring? Please don't forget to like and subscribe as we continue to make daily content here on Hypnos Mirror.